All right, cool. It's on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Last time I was busy at work, but now I have a day off, and um, I have all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, days off are always nice. Yeah. This week I work six days in a row. So. Damn. Getting that money. Yeah. Now I work at a sushi bar. So. Oh shit. What do y'all call y'all money over there? Um. Dollars. Oh, dollars. Yeah. What about you? Okay. Dollars. Well, I was dollars. I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know when I was in Canada, I think they call it a loony. It's like one loony or something like that. Two hell? loonies. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I used to live in Japan, and um, and over there, the yen. They call it yen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but yeah, so, so guys, shoot, man. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready when you're ready. I'm, I'm changing diapers right now. <laughs> Not so, so good. Do whatever. If you. If you hear, if you hear a baby, hey, <laughs> yeah, if you hear a baby, it's, it's my daughter. Hey. Now, nah, you give personality to these videos, um, to these ducks. <laughs> you know I mean, what's up? Yeah, not much. I was just, um, yeah, excited to get you back on and do a proper one instead of the other short one, unfortunately, from last time, <laughs> thanks to work. Yes, yeah, it's, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Let's just, let's do it, baby, I'm ready. All right, cool. So, oh, it's the last call. She just pulled my headphones out. Oh, daddy, daddy on the interview. You can't, you can't eat my headphones. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, sweet. So yeah, since we last talked, I've been going through your your discography and just trying to mm-hmm. get because I use Google. I use, I use, I use, so, so <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say? No, I'm just saying I've been going through your past discography and um, uh-huh. you have about six albums on YouTube Music. And um, okay. Been going through the mall, Merry Christmas, Green, Green, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah it, for all the albums, and and of course your single with Madlib. And I was like, I just want to ask, how did you get in in contact with Madlib? Did he contact you? Did you contact him? Um, top secret. Top secret. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, top secret. That nah, that's top secret. I can't tell that one. Can't tell that story yet. Fair enough. Uh, secrets of the trade, huh? Madlib is a pretty mysterious guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It must be exciting. But yeah, what did you say? That was the first time you guys collaborated, wasn't it? Officially, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when I um when I came out, my first Merry Xmas, I rapped over a Madlib beat on that shit. Okay. But like, I didn't I didn't know him at the time. You feel me? Yep. But he fucked with it, which was just so funny because I never, I thought he was mad about it. Somebody told me he was mad. I rapped over his beat or whatever, and I didn't like tell him. Yep. But kind of find out when I met him, he was like, yo, I, I fuck with that shit. Da, 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 da. He was telling me about it and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I thought it was interesting. I was like, damn, I ain't worked with him all these years because I thought he didn't fuck with me or somebody had told me he was mad, but. Come to find out he liked it, so. Yeah, true. Funny, but the first official time that people heard us work together um, was Black Mirror, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So how, long, so how long did it, like, did he already have a beat ready for you, or did you guys go through the, the process together in finding the right instrumental? Or? Um. Well, I did that song two years ago. I recorded it two years ago. So, oh. yeah. So, um... Hell yeah, when he, he sent me a whole bunch of beats, I got a whole bunch of beats from him. And then um, I heard that when I just started writing to it, I did it. But then, um, you know, then they was telling me that he had put the beat out previously, mm-hmm. right? But he just sent it to me, so I didn't know, you know what I mean? Because I never heard it before. So, you know, once, once they told me that, I was like, they was like, do you still want to use it? I was like, I don't care, fuck it. It ain't like nobody was rapping over it. It was just like an instrumental that was out, so. To me, it was, it was still mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how I looked at it. So yeah. yeah so um. Yeah. That's how that's how that song came together and shit like that. Yeah, and um, like I'm curious, is Madlib like a strict kind of producer? Like, like you know, was he on you about you know about a specific way to do a verses, or did he just let you do your own thing? Or? Um, depends. He he, you know, I mean, it depends. It depends. Depends. If yeah. he don't like something, he'll tell you or he feel like you should do something different. He'll he'll say something. But um, he gave me a lot of freedom to do what I wanted to do. 
mm-hmm. as far as like just navigating a record and shit like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. it wasn't like no, it wasn't nothing. That's good because you sound supernatural on the track. Like, like you know, your flow complements his kind of um, beat making style perfectly. So, yeah. Well, I like I like to think I like to think that I'm just nice and I could I could rap to anything. You know what I'm saying? Just nice. Oh, yeah, true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, but yeah, nah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And um, you know, there's a bar on that song that that really stuck. They really stuck out with me. It's when you said mm-hmm. we used to call each other gods, and then we call call each other savages. Mm-hmm. It's really, like an interesting perspective. I thought about that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? How like hip hop has changed. You know what I mean? From like Wu Tang and everybody. Well, not even hip hop, just black culture. You know, we used to call each other God. That's how we used to greet each other when I was young. Oh, what up, God? What up, God? You know. Mm. Now, you know, now it's like I'm a savage. You know, it's yeah. crazy. Like subconsciously. You lowering yourself, yeah. right, Daddy, baby, right, 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 right. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Um. And yeah, like, like I said, I was going through your 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 back discography, and I was the album. The yeah. album. Mary Christmas three. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. She good. Jeez. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. Relax. Yeah. What'd you say? <laughs> nah, it's all good. Um, I was just saying on your album Merry Xmas Three, I mm-hmm. thought it, I thought it was really really interesting because you had that song on here, uh, Breather, wasn't it? Where you where you um where you where you had your mom on it, I think, at the end. Yeah, it's my mom. Yeah. yeah. And she was telling you about how she set up Christmas for you. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. really interesting. Like, yeah, like it was like her perspective and her way of doing it. It's good. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a good yeah. technique. So, did you bring her into the studio, or did you just like add like a voicemail, like a? Oh uh, no, we did that at her house. I was at her house, and we was talking about it, and um, I just put my voice recorder on my phone. I didn't even like let her know I was listening. I had that in mind or whatever. I just brought it up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I do that a lot. I'm real sneaky like that. <laughs> yeah, nah, you know, um, tricks to your trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of my things. Because you know when you tell people that you're going to do something, they tend to get apprehensive or they try to be too cool. Uh, like, they, they don't really, they don't get the real version of themselves. You know what I'm saying? So when I do that, I do that not to be sneaky, but just to let somebody be relaxed and be themselves, the same person like... You know, the same person you would be if we were just sitting here talking, you know, so yeah. people get the real version of you in the music, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, it was a cool little, yeah, little skit at the end. And um, actually, the whole album I enjoyed because, yeah, like, it was just a tight little project. And you were saying how he made it in, what, three days? I think that's yeah, I did it in, like, three, four days, yeah. So, how does, so, so is that, like, normally, like, so, so roughly per album, how long... Like, as, as far as the written work goes, how long does it normally take you to finish, like, an EP or project? Uh, it depends on how, how, how depressed and how, um, how emotional I am at the time. Like, usually, like, um, if, if I'm in a good mood and I'm feeling confident, like, I'm just on my bullshit, I could do an album in, like, four days, three, four <laughs> wow. days. But, like, if I'm over-contemplating it, it could take me, like, a year. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's a different. It just it matters where I'm at. And um and and like what's your um so in your head what's the perfect atmosphere to start writing? Do you have like a, a specific thing like you have music in the background? You need to be out in the sun. Like like is there anything specific you need to write, or just whenever? No, not just whenever, man. I got different methods. I, I need something like that that's consistent. But no, I, I mostly just got different methods depending on when, where I am, what what what, what emotional mood I'm in. You know. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times I go driving at night and I listen to music and I come up with ideas for songs. Um, or I just go in the bathroom late at night. I write a lot of songs in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Like just, you know, turn the water on and just to cut the lights off. I write music in there. Yeah. Uh, depends, man. It just depends on like, depends on where I am and like what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, what I'm trying to say depends on my process. Yeah, 
And, um, you know, actually, going back to the Christmas, the Christmas album one last time, I found it, I found it interesting, the, um, the, the, the outro of the Krampus freestyle. Yeah. You know, it's just because throughout the, the last leg of the song, you know, obviously you were talking about someone, but then mm-hmm. obviously, you know, obviously you repeated the fact that, that, that you're not going to bring it up, who it is, like name names. Yeah. It's like interesting because I'm like, I, I, like, obviously I wouldn't know who it is, but I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Thinking like I wonder who he's talking about. <laughs> Ah, this is some street shit. It was some street shit. You know what I'm saying? This is some street shit. <laughs> Shout out going through this one. Yeah. Nah. Some stupid street shit. Nah, but I regret I regret making that song. I just shouldn't even have did that. But I was just I was just mad. You know what I'm saying? So it was either that, it was either that or it was either that or violence, to be yeah. honest. So yeah. you know. Sometimes that's what hip hop is for, right? Back in the day they used to break dance. Mm-hmm. Meet in the park so they didn't have to fight, you know? So they would just dance yeah. at each other and shit. So, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's that, kind of, um, that kind of reminds me, actually, of... I'm pretty sure it's Ice Cube's first album, America's Most Wanted. And, mm-hmm. I, like, I forgot the song, but he's like, oh... But he's kind of he's kind of trying to separate himself from that era. And he's like, oh, um, where black folks, where black folks used to dance each other. I don't know what the... But it was like he was talking about how how like he's not that kind of guy. He's not a breakdancing guy yeah. from the eighties. He's a street. Yeah, I know. I forgot the song was. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember that line. Yeah. Um, but um. Great record too. Yeah, it is one of my. I think I'm pretty one of my sure, favorite records. Yeah, it it's definitely my favorite Ice Cube album for sure. First three, first three. I like the first three equally. Mm. That's Certificate have- America's Most Wanted and um, Lethal Weapon. Oh, what was that uh, Lethal Injection? Yeah, I actually have Lethal Injection on vinyl. Yeah, great records, man. Great fucking records, man. That three album run is ridiculous. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you know what's crazy? The more I get into hip hop, as in like back in the day, the more I studied hip hop and gained my knowledge. It was it was like mind blowing to me when I first heard Chuck D from Public Enemy, and I was like, "This is where Ice Cube gets his influence from." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they did because they did um. They did his. They did his first three albums. Mm. They, oh, really? they, they, yeah, they made all the beats. They executive produced his record. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. That's why. Um, that's why. What'd you call it? Uh, Public Enemies on the Dangerous Species on that song. Um. Uh, a young brother got it bad because I'm brown. They own oh, that song yeah. together. That's yeah. the first time a East Coast artist worked with a West Coast artist. Huh, true. Yeah, yeah. So. When he when he left NWA, he he knew that he needed some fire beats. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So he went to Public Enemy because at the time the Bomb Squad, that's who did Public Enemy shit. They had the hardest beats, mm. other than Dr. Dre. You know what I mean? Yeah. You lose Dr. Dre, you're like, damn, I ain't got Dr. Dre no more. What I'm gonna <laughs> do? So he went to them, and that's how he came up with that album. That album is just like a West Coast Public Enemy album. Yeah. So he came out to New York. He came out. To, he said he came out to New York. He just bought like a whole stack of ROM books. Mm. And he just wrote. He just spit all his raps to their beats, and that's how he made that album. They did like I want to say they did probably eighty percent of that album. Yeah. And well, yeah, yeah. Well, well that's true. It, if, if that's true, you can definitely hear it because his first three albums, like you said, are the classic ones. <laughs> exactly. And then like he went over to the West Coast because around after that, I think that's when he started doing West Coast Connection, West Side yeah. Connection with um Dub C and. Mac 10 and all those records, which I'm not really like super into. I like political ice cube. I don't really like, I don't really like gangster, just I'm in the party ice cube. I like, you know, I like conscious ice cube. It's my favorite ice cube. Yeah. You know, He's like a rapper to me. If he don't have a good beat, his shit don't sound good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Although I gotta say, I had, like I do have a weak spot for raw footage, the album. I, I never heard that one. It has, you know, gangster I made me do it. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's good. He talks about fist fighting the president. <laughs> Which yeah, is- yeah he, I mean, he probably still got some shit. I, I, I really haven't, I really haven't fucked with him since. Yeah, you know, I listened to one out of War and Peace. That's yeah. the last one I listened to. Yeah, that is two volumes. Yeah, Great. the war disc and the peace disc. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had that shit when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, going back, you know your comment about how it was the first time an east coast and a west coast rapper came together you know g- growing up w- when i was young so this is probably about 2005 2006 for me one of the most groundbreaking um collaborations was 
the song Gang Banging 101, Snoop in the Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blue copy treatment because you got a blood and a crip. And I don't think, uh, like, up until that point, that has happened. Not that I'm aware of in, like, music. Where... Well, no, because, um, nah, um, what you call it was blood. Uh, 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 what's my son's name? He was the only blood rapper at that time. Um, damn, not Warren G. DJ Quick. Really? He's a blood. DJ Quick is a blood, yeah. Oh, true. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, he's like one of the first blood rappers. Everybody yeah. else was Crips. Uh, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, all of them was Crips. True. I love so, DJ Yeah. Yeah, DJ Quick, a lot of his early records, they didn't ever trip off that with him. Like, they would let him rock, even though he was Crip, whatever. You know, they didn't care. That's crazy. That's crazy when you think about that shit. Yeah. Not everybody's in a fucking game. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, insane. And, um, so, you know, all right, so... So I want to talk about like um, LP real quick because so here's so here so here's here's actually how I got into your music. I was listening to Run the Jewels and then I was like, "Fuck, I want to discover more about this guy." And as you go through his discography, your name mentions is your name comes up in like tens and tens of handfuls. Your name mm-hmm. appears in his early discography and like featured and like oh recommendations. So so because of that, it, like it got me curious about your work and then obviously mm-hmm. that snowballed to you and now. Here we are. But yeah, so so you guys have been friends, that means, for years. Damn yeah, now, yeah. Basically, years now, yeah. And that's funny that you said his early work. When I met L, he was already, like, out for, like, 10 years. No, true. <laughs> yeah, he was in Company Flow. Oh, wow, back then. I'm on his third album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm on LB's third album. Well, really, technically, I'm on his his fourth album. Because mm-hmm. he did Company Flow, and then he did three albums by himself. He did two albums by himself. I'm on the fourth one. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. Well, how did you guys meet? I met LP walking down the street. <coughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was walking down the street, and I turned the corner, and um, he was standing there. I was like, oh, shit, you LP. He's like, oh, shit, you Esquire. And then we just got cool. Like, that's really the story. That is a dope story. Short and sweet. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's funny, but um, but yeah, like he was, it was funny, man. That shit was like serendipity. He was already like one of my favorite rappers and shit. Yeah. So I was just God just meant for us to work and know each other and shit because he was like one of my favorite rappers. And when I did Lost in Translation, my first mixtape, well, my second mixtape, but um, I used all his beats for the album. Mind you, I didn't know him. I just used a bunch of his instrumentals because I liked them. Yeah, it's funny, but I was like, "Damn, I hope I hope this album don't get taken down or whatever." You know what I'm saying? That's when I was yeah. starting out, and um, I ended up meeting him. Like, this so funny. Like, I was like, I was like, I used to listen to him every day when I went to work. Yeah, that was like my shit. When I go to work, that was like my theme music. Yeah, he had an album called "I Sleep When You're Dead." Oh, yeah. I used to listen to this album every day when I used to go to work on the train. Mm. So I just got obsessed with his music at the time, and I guess I just manifested it. I just manifested meeting him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, do you do you do you fuck with this? This might be a dumb question, but do you fuck with Killer Mike? Oh, it's my brother. It's my big brother. Yeah, nah, he's a political savage. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Mike is the man. How are you? Have you um? So, um, have you had any requests or any like, like, like any idea on going on any of the Run the Jewels albums, or are you just? I'm on the last one. You're on the last one on the Jewel Dome? Yeah. Hang on, let me see. So, I'm going to album back and forth. Hang on. Where? Which, which I'm song? On, I'm on Never Look Back. I'm so I talk in the middle. Oh, true. Yeah, on the, um, yeah, on the song feature names, it doesn't have. Yeah, I, I know. Go. We did that on purpose. Yeah, I'm, I'm, when you listen to the song, it's like, okay, here's the play. It's not about the good time. Not about the. That's me talking on the album. Oh, true. There you go. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. <a dope. laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. That, that's a dope album. That is. That's crazy. That's and funny. That's, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me talking on the album. Nice. No, that's um. No, that's awesome. Um. So yeah, you, you guys have been friends for a long time. And what about um, Danny Brown? Have you guys been longer friends or same amount? Same amount of time. I actually knew L before I knew Danny. Mm. L introduced me to Danny. Yeah. Well, I, I met all of them around the same time. Like, it's funny. Like, it's yeah, around the same time, a couple months yeah. apart. Yeah. It must be cool to have, like, you know, like in my head, 
the underground rappers have such a strong, like, almost family bond. You know, because in the mainstream, all they, you know, most artists, all they care about is getting rich, you know, you know, streams and all that. But in the underground, I, like, I get a sense of... Not so we care about, too. Oh, well, I mean, it seems like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. So, all right, so, you know, because in my head, I'm not sure where I heard this, but in my head, I always assumed you called yourself Mr. Motherfucking Esquire so that you, so that, so that, so that you can stay in the underground because mainstream wouldn't actually, would have a hard time kind of kind of promoting the guy with, with the name Motherfucker in his name. Oh, um, yeah, I, I really never, I never really thought about that type of shit. I just, you know, I just was rapping. That was just my name. That was just a name that I got. In New York, so yeah. it was like it wasn't like a concerted effort to be a rapper. If that makes sense, like we were just making songs and making videos and just doing, having fun and getting drunk at my crib and just bugging out. You know what I mean? Being stressed out from work, shit like yeah. that. This camaraderie, me and my friends, and that was just what niggas called me. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna be mainstream, I'm gonna be commercial, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be that, like. Never thought about that. We just rapping. I don't think nobody, when you rapping, when you start rapping, I don't think nobody looks at themselves and say, I'm going to be underground or I'm going to be mainstream. I think you just make songs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people probably say they're going to be mainstream because they want to, especially nowadays because rap is like pop. But, mm. you know, back then, I think I just wanted to just rap. I wasn't really thinking about it, you know what I'm saying, in, in broader terms. If I, if I could go back, if I would have thought about it, I wouldn't even have did it. <laughs> you wouldn't have done rapping. No, I would have rapped. I I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had my name have a cursing in hell no. It's not marketable. Oh. So you so you would just be Mr. Mr. Esquire. <laughs> yeah, I'd just be like Esquire or some shit. Oh, yeah. But it's too late now. It's just like it's yeah. everybody know. Yeah, no. And um that's true. So so I so I wanna pick your brain. What are your thoughts? Do you have any strong feelings towards people who use ghostwriters? Is it like a major bad thing to you? Or like because some people say they don't really care that much. Some people say it's like the worst sin hip hop. The worst sin in hip hop, in your opinion. Nah, the worst sin in hip hop is like biting or trying to sound like another nigga. To me, that's my worst sin. Like I feel like that's that's the worst shit you could possibly do as an artist. Yeah. So, so if you knew someone in your crew, or like you know, a fr like a friend of yours or someone who's also in the music industry and they use the ghostwriter, you wouldn't care that much. Man, what the fine ghostwriting? Like you didn't write anything, or yeah. Yeah. Because I think when people think about yourself. ghostwriting, they think about it in an awkward way. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, I don't know what ghostwriting is. Like, what is ghostwriting to you? Yeah, well, I mean, to me, it's like it's like someone who doesn't write at all any of this stuff. They get the stuff handed to them, you know, sh sheets of lyrics for them to use, and they just sing it, or they just rap it. Like, they don't actually come off. Like the City Girls? Yeah. Yeah, they don't write their raps. Yeah. Um, or like... Well, Drake apparently is like, has a ghostwriter. Yeah, he writes his rhymes, though. Yeah, yeah. With him, he just like, has he has other people helping with his rhymes, but he writes them. Hmm. Because yeah. he writes for other people, so how you can't you can't write your own rhymes? I mean, Kanye writes <laughs> because like people help. Him, apparently, he doesn't. It's not yeah, like, like Drake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Drake, he, Drake writes his raps though. Like he he can rap. Drake Drake writes his songs and shit. Yeah. No, I think it's incredible. True, I do love a bit of. I know that because um, when I was um, when I was in Canada, I went and worked in his studio and shit. Oh, true. So yeah, yeah, I worked with um, Doc McKinney, who did like the Weekends first albums and shit. He did all the beats on them. Yeah. So like um, when I was there, you know, he was telling me stories about. He did a lot of shit for Drake too, but he was telling me um. He was telling me like, yeah, Drake. Well, Drake writes. He usually does this, or he does that, or like, like he. I mean, he actually works for him, so I know he would know that Drake wrote. You know what I mean? So when I heard he didn't write, I didn't believe it because I've been in the studio with people that make his music with him, and I know he writes. Yeah, true. But um, he probably get help. Like he probably just has, he probably just has people coming with ideas and help him with little certain little things and shit like that, or you know, yeah. maybe going. I mean, every rapper does that though. So. I can't say the only thing like you got reference reference tracks with other niggas spitting his songs. I can't respect that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean it depends. Like it depends because everybody everybody helps everybody. When you in a crew of niggas who rhyming, everybody's gonna come up with an idea. I might come up with a chorus. 
I might come up with something I'm like, damn, it'd be hard if you said that. That that fits you better than it fits me. But I just it just came to me. You know, it's not really like a ghostwriting thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But people like that do get go. Uh, you'd be surprised. I know rappers that y'all say a uh, fucking incredible that don't write their own. So <laughs> niggas shouldn't play that game. You know what I mean? Like who don't write raps and all that because you know from the outside looking in, you probably would think certain people write their raps. And if you really knew who didn't write their songs, yeah, your feelings would really be hurt. Yeah. I just leave it at that. And I'm talking about underground rappers, niggas that's supposed to be lyrical, amazing, all that. A lot of them don't write their songs. Uh, just keep them, just leave it at that. That's my huh? That's my yeah, man, trust me. A lot of these dudes do not write their lyrics, man. They got dudes around them that y'all don't even know exist that write their songs for them to help them. And, so don't, you know, just enjoy the music because you'll be very heartbroken if you live and die by that. Trust me. Fair enough. Wise words. Wise words. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, all right. So, you know, yesterday, yesterday, to further get more an experience of your, like, of your discography, I also listened to your LP Brainiac. And I thought yeah. Pretty interesting little short project. So, so what was your mindset about that album? Like, why make an album called Brainiac? I was about overthinking. You know, when I did it, I, I really had, you know, I just felt like I was overthinking my music, overthinking my career, and I just wanted to push something out. Because, like, as an artist, I think when you question yourself, you lose a little bit of what makes you special. You shouldn't question yeah. yourself. So the whole album was just about overthinking. Brain, hence the title, Brainiac. Hence the intro, where I'm, like, talking to my brain and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, you know, just overthinking, trying to kill that part of yourself that's overthinking. So, you know, that's why, like, the last song, I just rapped for, like, four minutes, and I'm just, like, putting all my emotions out there. It was, like, kind of like a venting section or, or like, um, therapy, you know what I'm saying? So that whole album was basically therapy and shit. And, like, if you look at the album cover, you see I'm, like, smiling and sort of cheesy and shit. Yeah. It's basically supposed to be, like, the fake smile that you put on for the world. Like, it's, like, fake happy, you know what I'm saying? But really, you're going through shit, so... That's really how I came up with the record, and that's what it, it meant to me. You yeah. know, nah, it's a cool I, record. Yeah, no, it is. And I'm like, I was thinking, like as I looked at, like as I looked at, um, at the album cover compared to your other album covers, I'm like, man, what is he up to? Is this some kind of like? <laughs> yeah, you know, it was like a parody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, you know, the one thing I noticed listening to all your EPs and albums, and the one thing I love about it is there's always kind of like a like a jazz undertone to all, to all your music. I love it, a jazz, yeah. jazz inspiration. Is that- That's um, crazy. I never even I never even noticed that, so that's all. <laughs> yeah, no, like, <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, and actually, going back to the first time we met a few, like a few weeks ago now, you said that Kismet was your favorite album so far. I said that? Yeah, you did. A few weeks ago? What was this? Maybe. Like on text, like I said to you, I'm like, oh, what's your favorite, like in your opinion, what's your favorite album so far? And you said Kismet. Yeah, I like that album. Yeah, I think so I, everybody usually says that's my best album. Nice. So what was your, yeah. because to me, it has kind of like a magical tone to it. Like, you know, like yeah. a old and magic theme. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why do you say that? I don't know. It just said like, you know, from the intro track, the weird Harry Potter vibes. <laughs> I don't know how to word it. Just yeah, like, I can see what you're saying. Like the production, right? Yeah, production, yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah, the cold um, is the first track. I mean... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the witch's pot. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, so why, why do I say it's my best record? Or, you know, hold on. Yeah, I mean, you know, like it's, like it's undeniable based on the production, that, like in the flow, but I'm just wondering, like, you know, what inspired the album? What made... You know, what was your mindset at the time making it? Yo, man, I, I almost really ill. You know, nobody's ever asked me that. <laughs> you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting, man. With that record, I made that record. I made a lot. I had, that's when I got signed to Universal. So I was trying to figure out, because all my, all my other stuff that I got signed off, I never, I rapped over other people's beats. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So 
I never made an album of my own production or an album of like me picking my own beats and my own sound and how I want to be it to come off, you know? Mm-hmm. It was always like whatever I had to deal with, that's just what I was doing. So when I when I did when I started on that record, I started on that record. Uh I started on that record kind of on some shit like, yo, damn, what what should my sound be? How do I want my sound to work? And how do I make being like I'm like I'm like a I'm a dude, I'm a street rapper, but I'm more like a little bit more philosophical than like gangster. Yeah. So how do I make this shit work sonically and how do I make it work emotionally? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that that really was my mindset with that album, like trying to figure out how to blend all my shit together without losing any of the potency of it. And I think I think I achieved it really well on that record, but um, yeah. So that's really was my mindset when I when I how I recorded. I went upstate. I went. What was we at? We was in Woodstock, Woodstock, New York. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, right right there where they did the Woodstock Festival back in the days and shit. But um, so went up there and we did mushrooms and then we came we came up with a bunch of songs and shit. That was actually supposed to be my album, but. I ended up not finishing it in time. Yeah. So I ended up having to go and put a half finished album out called Power and Passion, which was like not really what I wanted to do, but I had to finish it because like my contract and shit like that. Like, you know, mm. little shit like that. Aw. Yeah. So that was that. But um, what else you want to know about it? I mean, yeah. like I was wondering, because you told me a few years ago that this is your most celebrated project, so I was just wondering. Well, your mindset was. Yeah. Like- I mean, yeah, it was just, you know, I don't know. You got to ask me something a little, I mean, you got to be a little more specific and question it because I really don't know how it's, how to explain all of it in one sentence. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, it was just a, like, it was just a spur of the moment thought, I guess, because I'm, because I'm, like, I'm looking at your, like, I'm looking at your discography on my, um, on my YouTube music account and I, like, saw Kismet and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember you talking about that. So I just wanted, I just wanted to, to pick your brain as well. Yeah, that's that's you know, I guess that's my legendary album. That's the one everybody say I could never top. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So well, maybe one day I'll top it, maybe not. I don't know. Your, your new album could top that when it comes out? Uh, that's the aim. It's always the aim, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't really aim to like please people. I just do what I do. You know what I mean? What, yeah, what happens, it, happens. Yeah, you just be yourself. Yeah. Hopefully that's why everyone loves you, you know? You're unique. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you move on from certain shit. You know, sonically, you move on, or, like, creatively, you move on. You get new ideas. You get go through new experiences, so yeah, want to keep it popping. Yeah. And, you know, that's actually interesting because, because the next thing I want to ask you is how do you keep your passion for the music after all these years? Like, what drives oh, no. you? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know. That, that, I really don't know. Sometimes I ask myself that shit, man. I don't know. Yo, yo, you don't hear daddy on the interview, little girl? Huh? Yeah, hello? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. No, it's just, like, interesting because, like, I hear so many rappers in their later years, and they just sound flat, or they sound nothing like they used to in their prime, but you still sound, yeah, you still sound in prime. Like, you know, you, you could play an album from 2013 or even older and then listen to your listen to your latest album or your latest single and you still sound you still sound hungry passionate um damn that's that's a big compliment i don't know it's just natural for me i really don't think about it like that you know mm-hmm. i don't really i guess some people i always feel like rappers fall off because i mean creatively i mean business wise you're gonna fall off because yo 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 you're doing a lot you're doing a lot you doing now you smiling it's not funny it's not funny ava why are you laughing? Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm over. Yeah, so it's uh, it's always like, it's always like uh, I I feel like business wise you fall off because trends are gonna change. People get oh, oh my god. Hold on one second. Yeah, so we're gonna take your time. Edit this out. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're not even crying. You're not crying. 
How you doing this to daddy? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, my daughter's six months. She's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. They're always, they're always so cute at that age, six months. Little baby. Yeah, adorable. Bro. Look, look at your little cartoons. Look at your little stuff. Look. Look. Yeah, now you, yeah, now you love me. Little bears and shit, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, I, I feel like a lot of times, you know, niggas get niggas get jaded, or like you start caring about other things. You don't care about the music as much. Or you don't really pay attention to how the times are changing. So you just think like everybody's still rapping like 2010. Like styles change, people change, the flows change, the rhythm of music changes. You gotta be able to keep up with that shit, you know, and pay attention to the younger artists and what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. So if you could do that, you could always stay skillful. Plus, if you stay original too, being original is always a cheat code to like not falling off. Because if you're original, then you don't really have to worry about competing. Like like, look at Wiz Khalifa, right? I love Wiz Khalifa, but, like, his, the, the, the style of music changed so much that, like, when he comes out with a record now, it doesn't hit the same, even though his music is probably still really good. But, you know, he sounded a lot like a lot of his contemporaries. Or his contemporaries came out and they sounded a lot like him because he was real original when he came out. Yeah. But then you had people coming doing his shit 2.0, 3.0. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you got to always be able to stay versatile and, just keep keep it keep it moving. Like I think I'll always be able to make great music. Like I don't think I'm ever gonna sound like dated or I'm never gonna sound like whack lyrically or like my flow, my voice. It's just things that I keep making this on and I just make sure that I try to always pay attention to what's going on and how to how to deliver something that's similar to what's going on, but still have my own twist on it, you know, flow wise and shit like that, production wise, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. And um, like I was gonna ask because you've been rapping, you you've been rapping for a long time. So I was gonna ask, what do you like, like in your opinion, what's the biggest difference from the music industry back then when you first started to the music industry now? Is there anything that you notice really heavily has changed? You know, like, um, it's it's more, it's more corporate, mm. and it's less, it's less by the people. It's more. It's more of a machine now. It's more controlled than ever. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like um, very algorithm based. Uh, when I started, you could like kind of get come from nothing and like kind of like make your way in. Now you kind of got to do the networking before you put the record out. Yeah. yeah. Before you might just put something out and it catches virally. Now they, man they manufacture the viral. You know what I'm saying? Like, They'll put that good that shit to somebody on TikTok and let them do a dance to it. And next thing you know, this song is jumping. Yes. And you ain't even got another song. You know what I'm saying? Like everything is like, and everybody sounds very much the same. When I came out, like everybody sounded way different. You know what I'm saying? Now, to me, in my opinion, I think all underground rappers sound the same. And I think all mainstream rappers sound the same, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, that ain't no, that ain't no shots to nobody, but like I just feel like that. I feel like all the underground rappers sound like Rock Marciano. Yeah, and all the mainstream rappers they sound like little baby and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or NBA young boy, you know what I mean? Like everybody, it's only like three, four styles that rappers really have right now. When I came out, it was like me, it was Danny, it was Lil B, it was a lot of niggas. Everybody was different, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody was wild different, just creative and doing some weird shit and trying to just figure that shit out. But yeah. now everybody's just pretty much like, yo, I sell man coke. I'm in the hallway. Uh, you know, B ain't got no drums and shit. All the beats sound the same. Like, yeah. it was like, all right, cool, whatever. But, you know, those are the differences to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's just very controlled to me. Music, the music sounds very controlled to me. Yeah. In my opinion. And, you know, do you, do you listen to, um, do you, do you listen to the Griselda boys? Um, yeah, not really, no. Yeah, because... <laughs> To me, really yeah, to me, they were like a big, like, kind of breath of fresh, breath of fresh air. But that was just to me, to the music scene, because they're bringing back the New York style, you know, the, the 90s, almost Wu-Tang, Mob Deep style into the you modern think so? era. Well, that's just my opinion, yeah. You think I, so? I mean, come with the machine. You think? You th yeah. All right, let me ask you this then. Hmm? You, you think, I don't know, all right, so... um. 
Because I don't think so. I don't agree with that. Yeah. And what's your opinion on it? Yeah. I think they just sound like they self. I don't think they sound like the 90s at all. I don't oh, think yeah, they sound yeah. like, like, I don't think they sound like, like, hmm. all right, uh, where's Buster Rounds from? New York. Do they sound like Buster Rounds? No. Um, <laughs> so, all right, um, hmm, okay, let's, where's Mace? Where's Mace from? New York, I'm not sure. <laughs> from Harlem. Oh. Is that like Mace? Definitely not. No? No. So, so that's what I'm saying. Like, when people say that, I always bug out of that. Like, we're New York. Like, yo, bro, there's no such thing as a New York sound, bro. Like, yeah. no such thing. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like niggas just sound like themselves, but like, you know, even even in saying they sound like Wu Tang and shit, I don't really think they sound like Wu Tang either. Like, Wu Tang music was mad weird. Like, their music ain't as weird as Wu Tang is. Like, Wu Tang was like really kind of weird, but it's similar because like they do the, they do the wrestling shit. Wu Tang did the karate shit. You know, yeah. so it's like similar. It's fla- it's a piece of the flavor is there. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I don't think they got nothing like. That sound like Wu Tang, you know. I think they just sound like themselves. Yeah. When I, yeah. I think I, I just don't. As a New Yorker, as a New York rapper, I hate when people say like, the old New York sound or like, this is what New York sounds like. Yeah. Cause yo, New York don't sound like nothing. It's so much different artists that's from New York. Yeah. That sound different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I feel like people just skip over that. Everybody's a Bob Deep Wu Tang. But it's like, it's a lot of motherfuckers from New York, man. It's a lot of different sounds, bro. Like, and all that shit get discounted. Like, we just we just ignore so much music. Like, oh yeah, that shit don't exist. That didn't exist. But like, you know, I think I think I don't think because like, if you say what's the real New York sound, then would you say Houdini and fucking Grandmaster Kaz and Melly Mel? They was from New York. They ain't sound yeah. like that. They the first rappers. Yeah. Do they sound like Slick Rick? No, they don't sound like Slick Rick. Like, it's so much New York rap. Yeah. But you have this little, how do I put it? You have a, a two, three-year window. When people talk about basically like 94 to 96, let's say, that people say that's the New York sound. But like, even by like 2000, Mar Deep wasn't even making records like that no more. Yeah. You know, you think about it. I'm just saying, like, think yeah, about yeah, it. Like, yeah. really think about what I'm saying. Like, you sound way different. Like, True. you know, it doesn't sound like that. So, like, that's why I always say, like, I feel like you almost don't give niggas their credit when you do that. Yeah, true. No, I, didn't, I definitely didn't think about that. Sound like that. Yeah, man. But, yeah, they're not really, and they're not really doing nothing nobody ain't do before them. they just doing it their own way. Yeah. You know, they from upstate. They upstate niggas. So, like... They like, they from six hours away, 10 hours away from New York, live in Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's way different than like, you know, like, like, like even Beanie Siegel from Philly, that's only four hours away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that shit, and Beanie Siegel, he don't sound like them, but you know, like he may rock the mic. And be singing up my stomach. Like they don't do that. They not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like. They doing their own thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, I don't really think so. Like, I think people just say that because it's like, oh, that's that New York shit right there. It just sounds cool to say. Yeah. But when you sit and think about the music from a logical standpoint and, like, really think about it, they kind of, like, just doing their own thing. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? well, let me just say, thanks thanks to this little little part of the conversation, I definitely have a new, like, a new article to write. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fresh you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, there's so much New York rap, man. You know, we always talk about one or two niggas and shit, but it's mad niggas out here. Yeah, well, even Wu Tang, you know I mean? don't even Wu Tang anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like it's two Wu Tangs. Like, it's like, to me, I feel like Wu Tang, they, um, because Wu Tang was like the shit, but when I grew up, Wu Tang was whack. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, the time period I grew up, because I grew up in the 2000s. So by the time I grew up and started fucking with rap, they was played out. Yeah. Did you watch this? Did you watch the documentary on them? Uh, oh, the new one that came out? I think it was on Showtime or one of them shits. Where it, was, it told like, it's a couple parts. It told their whole story. 
Oh, no, I haven't seen that yet. And then they tell the story of, um, they tell the story basically how they went on, they went on a tour and when they came back from the tour, I think Ghostface got on stage and was like, yo, fuck Hot 97. And then they got banned from Hot 97 for life or whatever. Yeah, no, I'm saying. <laughs> That's what happened to them. So what happened is that they got banned from the radio in New York. When they got banned from the radio, that's when I grew up listening to rap. So my generation, we never listened to them because we never heard them on the radio. So they wasn't allowed to be played on the radio. Yeah. Well, so when I got older, I heard they records. You feel mm -hmm. me? They probably records probably getting played other places, but in New York, they wasn't playing them no more. When I grew up, you never heard Wu-Tang. It was like an ancient thing. Like, it's not something you heard. You heard like Dipset, G-Unit, shit like that. Yeah. So... You know, I think I think that's the bridge that kind of fucked their career up as far as like then I feel like they records got a lot, a lot more street and a lot less weird. Like they didn't really make a lot of weird records. They made a lot more like, you know, you know, like Ghostface to me, like Supreme Clientele Ghost is ill. Like you hear him, he's not even making no sense. But then you hear like his new records, he just kind of talking some street shit. It ain't really like the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, these are all my hip hop opinions, B. Yeah. What do I know? No, I mean, you know. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, and to be fair, like in my opinion, only Wu Tang's first two albums are like are really listenable to me. Like in terms of front to back, uh, Wu, the, the Wu Tang Forever, I think, and then like you know, like the Thirty Six okay, Chambers. Hold on, hold on a second. I'm here. You hear me? Yeah, I'm back. You're back. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My phone was dying, so I had to. Oh, no. Fair enough. Now it's all good. I paused the recording anyway. All right, good. Good shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, to me, only the first two albums are a fire to me 36 Chambers and Wu Tang Forever, I think it is. Yeah. Um, after that, as far as the group concerned, not, not their solo efforts, but as far as the group concerned, Group is concerned. Yeah, that's really my two go tos anyway. And that was what, 94 yeah, that... and then 97? 97. 97, yeah. So, you yeah, know what's so ill about that? I guess, you know, you got a group that's like 30 fucking members. I mean, they got too big too. They had all the little Wu syndicates. They had a lot of little, a lot of shit. But I mean, they first two albums could carry them forever. They don't wanna, They really didn't have to do nothing great after that. So, yeah. So powerful the first couple of shits they did. I don't gotta do nothing after that, man. Um, what was your favorite solo um, Wu Tang solo member album? Uh, the Jizza, of course. Um, Liquid, Liquid Swords. Swords or or um, not not Supreme Clientele. Iron Man. Go. Uh, 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 I like um, Ghostface first album too. Yeah, those are probably two very big influential albums on me. Yeah, very big. Yeah, I think for me, Liquid Swords or Old Dirty Bastard debut. No, I never heard that record. Really? You never heard the Dirty Chambers, the, no. the Dirty version? No, I never <laughs> heard the album. I never heard the album, though. Wait, have you I heard, heard the singles, but I never heard the album. Oh. Huh? I was going to say, have you heard anything from, from Old Dirty Bastard, but you said you heard the singles? So. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I used to see him walking down the street. <laughs> what? what? Like, yeah, of course. I'm from Brooklyn. Wow, that, that that's insane. That's old yeah, man. What was he like in real life yeah. if you met him? Crazy. Well, <laughs> he sounded. <laughs> <laughs> he was the nah, original. but that dude, yeah. What'd you say? He was the original crazy, like the. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, I don't think they make him like that no more. You know what I mean? He's like he probably been like a um viral celebrity. He probably been like Bunk on one of them um crazy internet motherfuckers but yeah. nah yeah he was a wild boy man he was crazy yeah and, and mm -hmm. like i guess ultimately that's what caused his um his early passing yeah like, yo d yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um what are your opinion like, yeah i was gonna i was gonna say because i like i hear so many people online um say that danny brown is the new odb it's just say that shit about everybody that doesn't even make sense I mean, I guess maybe it's because of his former, I'm not sure now, uh, drug influence, like drug references and drug habits. I, I know, like, Danny Brown was very open. But about ODB it. ain't even rap about doing drugs like that. True. Yeah. They just say that shit. They just say that shit because 
Danny like the first Danny. That's it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, Danny, Danny ain't, Danny don't sound like no fucker. They say that shit about me. I don't, I don't sound shit like OGB. It's just, <laughs> any, anybody, they could, they just always need to compare you to somebody. It's just like, I know you didn't fall asleep after you made me make this bottle, girl. <laughs> yeah, so, hell yeah, I don't think so. That shit's whack. Yeah, no, I don't agree either. It's just, yeah, it's a frequent comment I see, like, you know, whenever I listen to yeah. sing on YouTube, they're like, oh, yeah, he's, lazy he's, ass. He's, a, he's the new ODB. First of all, ODB was never lyrical. True. ODB didn't write his rhymes, number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wrote his raps. True. Number two, he wasn't lyrical. He was not no, like, MC's MC. He was more of a, like, he, ODB was a lot, like, really kind of punk rock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? More than he was like a, he wasn't like a a, a a craftsman. You know what I'm saying? Like Danny Brown, craftsman. Yeah, definitely. Clever. Straight Detroit MC. Because all MCs from Detroit, slick. Slick talkers. Home of the slick talkers. So that's yeah. not even a good comparison. But that's like one of them lazy comparisons motherfuckers make to sound like they know about hip hop. But they don't really be knowing shit. You know, you know, um, I heard a rumor on, I, like, like I heard a, um, I heard something years ago. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I heard that apparently for Old Diddy Bastard's debut album, that Method Man actually gave up his best verses that were meant to be on on Tikal for 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 ODB to make it a hit. But, I don't know. I always heard that um Jizz and Rizzo wrote all the songs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, who knows? <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm like a little bit of a hip hop historian. If you ain't noticed, like I'm like. I love it. Super. I grew up super in the rap. You know what I mean? Like super duper, duper in the rap. Yeah. And you know, you know, in my where I'm, you know, where I live in um, in, like in Australia, amongst my friends, I'm considered the one that knows the most about hip hop. So it's really refreshing to have someone school me every time I talk. <laughs> nah, yeah, it's it's does. yeah, it's it's real humbling. For them. Yeah, and um, you know, just to clarify, you know, like I feel I have to say this after, like after the conversation we had, um, the reason, like I guess me saying that Griselda is like New York, it's, it's just a lazy way of me of me saying that that I love that they brought the grime that I that I associate New York with. I, that, that's really what I meant to say. I didn't mean obviously all of New York is obviously we don't know what you guys you guys don't know sound like Griselda or vice versa. But yeah, it's just the grime aspect, the grimy production, the dirty production that I'm that I'm so used with. Um, yeah, the East Coast oven is what I love about Brazil. Cool. But yeah, that's what I was trying to have to say with that. One. But um, yeah, and so the next question I have is like your album covers. You know how sexualized they are. Not that I care. You know, you know, you do what you know. Like obviously, the reason why. The reason why the reason why why I'm such a big fan and why obviously many people are, you you're your own guy. You don't mind pushing the limits. You know, you don't mind being yourself. And I'm just wondering, do you get any like, what's the word? Any flack from companies to like change your album covers at all, or your content? Nah, yeah, that, no, that type of shit ain't. That shit ain't even real, be like. Mm. Hell no, that shit ain't real. People always think that like, you're always like gonna end up in a meeting and they're trying to like change you and no nah, that shit ain't real bro they don't do that Wait, not dude. in my not in my not in my life i've never seen that or felt that yeah well i have heard yeah different stories from apparently that that stuff can happen but it's good i'm glad that it doesn't happen for you yeah like that shit ain't real b like bro you can go in there and do whatever the fuck you want to do because you see people do whatever the fuck they want to do so yeah it's up to you what you're gonna do like what, what, what is anybody gonna really what is anything any no idea is original everything that you want to do has been done already yeah janet jackson pulled her titties out at the super bowl yeah so how, how the fuck could a record label no record label is going to come to you and censor you the only thing they're going to probably try to do is make you do things that they want you to do yeah like um if you want a major they probably going to want a single yeah or like something that's commercially viable right yeah. But how the fuck you gonna get mad at them if you sign to a major label? Like that's what they do. That's like going to McDonald's and getting mad because they serve meat. Like, yeah, what the fuck. 
Nigga, you knew what you signed up for when you signed up, so that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, like, my album covers and shit, I never had no flack for that because everything I do is real. It's, it's part of my brand. It's part of, like, my story. So they fuck with that. Trust me. You, you, man, they know. They know what's up, man. Everything is always... They they sponsor artists that talk about shooting and killing people all day. You think they want to censor a titty? Like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, baby. That's fair enough. Uh, your daughter sounds so cute. <laughs> yeah, she is, but she sleep now, so uh, I mean, the worst is over. She gonna be sleep for like three hours too. I'm gonna deal with her all night. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a parent, so I can't imagine the stress that would be. I mean, obviously, the joy comes with it. Yo, honestly, man, you got kids. You, don't, you ain't really never stressed about anything. You know what I'm saying? Just the only thing that stress you is just hoping you could get them the best and just making sure that they're okay. But as far as, like, dealing with them, and it's always it's always fun. It's always love. It's, it's just such a feeling that you can't even – can't really put into words. So, yeah, beautiful thing. Yeah, if you – um. Like, I hear a lot of people who become first-time parents, they say, oh, since having a kid, my whole mindset's changed about about a certain something or a certain, you know, or maybe their whole mindset's changed. Have you felt that at all with anything specific? Like, no. have you had to change? Not really, no. That's good. <laughs> no, not really, no. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. Actually, it just makes me want to be more of myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, that I could say that maybe that part of it is true, like, just wanting to be a fuller version of myself and yeah. like uh push myself to push myself to push past my fears and be my my whole self and express myself fully and and really you know really give her the example of like what it means to be a complete human being cuz that's mm-hmm. always what I'm always in search of just pushing my limits and pushing myself to try to not be afraid of who I truly am and who what I truly want to do with myself and my emotions and learn how to express and communicate and listen and things like that. It makes me work on those parts of myself. Cause you know, you can shut those things down and oh, I'm gonna just get drunk. Fuck it. I'm gonna turn off. I'm gonna numb myself. I'm not going to deal with this. I'm gonna put this to the side. But when you got a kid, I know for me at least, I mean, I know it's not like that for everybody, but it makes you want to master yourself. Yeah. For me, that's how it's been. So I can say it's changed me in that way where I'm like, yo, I just want everything to be right. I can't procrastinate. I can't – because anything I do, she's going to do. And I want her to not deal with that. Because you waste a lot of your years in life dealing with your own insecurity, your own fear. You got to blow through that shit. So, um, yeah. So for me, that's, that's really kind of how it's been. Yeah. And, like, obviously this is still such a – Probably such a, I mean, maybe maybe for a parent, no, but in, but such an early thought. But have you thought about the prospect of obviously way down way down the line, your daughter becoming like a musician like you, not a rapper, but I um, mean, rapper, but anything musician. Yeah, right. Who knows? I I think about that stuff. I always think about what she's gonna do. Mm. But, you know, my my thing is like, I don't care what she does. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just want her to be. Just don't want her to be no crazy bitch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to be honest. Like, I just want her to be a good woman. Like, yeah. if she's a good woman, and her mother's a good person, so she'll be good. But, um, yeah, so, you know, that's really kind of the main thing I concern myself with. Just making sure that she's spiritually developed. Because once you're spiritually developed, you go do anything. You yeah. can walk in any arena and succeed. You know what I'm saying? But when if you, your shortcomings are what are going to... That's usually what stops people. You ever notice that? Like, you might have um you might have an artist that's really good and he get he has hang ups, he gets on drugs and it fucks his career up. Yeah. Cause he didn't deal with his spiritual he didn't grow spiritually in order to be successful as an artist. He had to he still had more things to do. Like look at DMX, right? DMX one of the greatest artists of all time. And he goes and gets on drugs or he was on drugs and he still he still had, you know, shit that was fucking with him that he couldn't really reach his full potential. So I really want to try to protect her. And make sure that she's able to shine her brightest. Yeah. You know, yeah. at whatever she does. If she wanna do music like daddy, I'll teach her how to do that. You know, if she wanna go and be a therapist like her mom, I'll let her do that. You know what I'm saying? If if she wanna go play bad, whatever. But if you got the the spiritual tools inside of you, 
you'll always succeed in anything you do in life. You know what I mean? You just got to be one with yourself. So that's really all, like, that's my main concern for my daughter and what I really want to leave behind for her. Yeah. Nah, well, you know, she may not know it at all. You know, maybe she does. But, yeah, she has one of hip-hop's greats and one of one of hip-hop's greatest historians as a father. Ah. <laughs> so, I'm all right. It's people, it's people way, it's people way, people way more knowledgeable than me when it comes to rap. But I try. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't really know what you're doing unless, I mean, you could do whatever the fuck you want to do. Right? You don't have to know the history or anything. But it's good to know it, you know? It is, yeah. I think I've I've kind of been able to be such a creative artist because I've listened to so much music. I'm able to draw from a lot, you know, and like find inspiration in a lot of places and reference a lot of shit. Because, you know, like, and I got that. Maybe I just had a hunger of music, of course. I just loved it. Yeah. But um, I really got that, like, from Tarantino. You know, like, I'm like a big Quentin Tarantino person. So... He, I saw an interview, he talked about how he worked in a VHS store and he would like watch movies all day. And that's how he got so good at writing movies, you know? So I, I kind of always, but like if I listen to a lot of rap, I understand a lot of rap, I'll be able to do a lot of rap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how I like, uh, what do you call it? Manifested or, or, or you know, it's part of my secret sauce. <laughs> nice. um, so, so is that, so when you're not recording or when when you just finish an album or whenever you have free time or spare time, is that what you do? Do you just research music or listen to music? Yeah, for the most part, I listen to a lot of music or um, I read. Mm. You know what I mean? I really don't watch TV. Like, I, I, I always feel guilty because everybody's always talking about TV shows and I don't know any TV shows or shit. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm watching The Mandalorian now, though. Nice, nice. It's all right. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, a lot of shows. Oh, you watch Fargo? You watch this? You watch Dexter? Never seen it. Don't even – couldn't tell you what the people look like, anything. I don't really do that. But for the most part, like, I read and I watch, like, a lot of old documentaries and, like, educate myself to a lot of stuff. Like, I'm, like – I'm, like, into shit like that. I listen to a lot of old 70s music. But sometimes I just get into, like uh, – a binge mode with music. I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to listen to nothing but 80s rap for the next month. So I just listen to, like, old Schooly D records and, like, Willie D and Ghetto Boys. And I just get into that shit. And I just listen to their whole discography and just research their shit, read their old interviews. Like, I just get into it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a hobby for me. I just love I just love the music. Yeah. So it's, like, one of my main – um one of my main – uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it's like one of my main hobbies, like just music, just old music. Sometimes I get into some new artists, I listen to them, try to check, try to figure out what they about, mm-hmm. see if there's anything there, like, oh, let me see, let me see what he's about, I'm listening to this shit. Because you don't really know what artists until you listen to their album. Yeah. yeah. The singles, yeah. you know, that's just a commercial. Yeah. The album is like the meat and potatoes, you know? Exactly, 100%. That's, yeah, that's the message I, um, not message, that's the, the point of view I always try and push in like all my friends and family who are music heads um you know they listen mm-hmm. to singles or playlists and I'm like dude you need to listen to the album like the album you know they put their heart and well they should put their heart and soul into this album you know yeah that's why people don't do it bad. anymore because everybody's just like you don't listen to it anymore no, it's a shame because I'm yeah I love albums like front to back I just listen to it when I walk my dog or whatever mm-hmm the album so worth it like yeah, yeah. you never know what you're going to get i mean if it's a new album you know it's exciting oh is it going to be bangers is it going to be a concept album is it going to be mm-hmm. what... that part especially hip-hop is really suffering because of the whole singles thing like it's really you know that's my old man shit like that when it comes to shit like that it's like when i'm on my real like grumpy old man like i just hate this shit i just hate it yeah you know what i mean because yeah. i'm such a music person you know it's just like, man, motherfuckers don't even like really put the time into an album or anything like that. And I know I sound like a dinosaur. It's fucked up. I got to sound like a dinosaur for saying that. But it just feels that way to me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, oh actually, that's a point. Um. Have you listened to the new Boldy James album yet? Well, I guess it's not the new one. It came out like earlier this year. Um. Uh. No, nah, I didn't. I didn't listen to it. You know, it was funny. Man. I don't listen to a lot of underground rap like that. I know everybody yeah. thinks that because I'm an underground rapper, but. 
I really, I really don't be fucking with that shit like that, bro. Like, I don't really listen to, I don't really listen to them niggas like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I watch it, I watch a video or two. You mm. know what I mean? Like, I watch a video. Hold on one second. Don't cry. Oh, you're gonna cry, aren't you? Yeah, you got you. Okay. Yeah, you got you. Yeah, you got you. Yeah, you got you. That's all right. Yeah, hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Almost dropped my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> this is a regular occurrence. We got kids, man. Yeah, you're watching the video? Oh, uh, no, she, she knocked out. But hold on a second. I'm just going to put her in the room. Um, yeah. Okay, take it back. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm back. Yep. Yeah, so what, what, what did you ask me? Oh, no. You said that you were watching a video. You watch videos. And then you yeah, I, I typically, yeah, like, I listen to, like, I don't know, man. Like I said, like, a lot of underground rap, that shit don't really interest me no more. Like, I, I just, shit don't be cool like that to me no more. Like, it's just mad boring. <laughs> so I don't, really, I don't really listen to a lot of the niggas and shit. But, you know, what I do here is cool. It's cool. Like. All right. Yeah. Um, the one thing I want to ask you, like, you know, like, if you don't feel like, like talking about this and fair enough, but I was wondering, do you have like, like in your head anyway, for the, for 2020, do you have a, at, at least a top five album, albums of the year list in your head? Hell no. I don't even, no. hell no. Cause I really ain't listen to a lot of, I mean, I feel like I ain't listening to nothing mind blowing this year. I'm trying to think maybe I did. Yeah, so I've been thinking about doing an album, uh, an album, uh, like a video before the end, before the the end of the year about my top five albums of, the, of 2020. And I was wondering. If you had any. I don't know. I really can't even call it right now. I'm just like drawing a blank on that shit. Yeah, that's no, fair enough. You're actually the third, yeah. the third underground rapper to tell me that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, it's been a little dry to me. Like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> what about Buster Rhymes' new album? Yeah, I don't really listen to Buster Rhymes like that, man. Okay, so who do you? I don't listen to Buster like that. Huh? So who do you listen to? Like, who's your current go-to? Like, like, like current. Oh. Current rappers I listen. Rap just rap shit. Mm hmm. Or um, you know, yeah, any. Rapping or other genres? So I listen to, I listen to, um, I'm trying to think what I've been listening to, man. Cause, you know, people always ask you this in interviews. This is a very common interview question, <laughs> but I never can answer it. Um, I'll be listening to a lot of old shit, man. I, I, yo, just be listening to a lot of old shit. Yep. I'm trying to think what I'll be riding around listening to because the shit I listen to is so weird like I just probably don't even fucking know what it is um I don't know man I can't even answer it bro I can't even do it man you know what I'm saying um what I've been fucking with what I be riding around late night listening to I listen to Saigon yeah his first mixtape the y'all father I, I listen to that a lot yeah, that's one of my favorite mixtapes ever. I love that record. I think I think that I think that shit is perfect lyrically. I think that's probably one of the greatest albums ever to me. Um, what else, man? I listened to uh, Royce. He got this mixtape called The Bar Exam that he did back in the day. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I was fucking with that a lot this year. I was listening to that. I don't know why. I was just listening to it. Um. Uh, the singer, sir, he signed a TDE, S-I-R, sir. I fuck with him hard. This shit is hot. Um, what else have I been listening to? 
I haven't even listened to Biggie this year. I, I usually listen to Biggie like once a year, like on his birthday, but I ain't listened to Biggie this year. Yeah. I usually listen to Tupac sometime. I ain't listened to Tupac this year. Um, oh, you know what album I was fucking with too? It's this KRS one album called uh Edutainment. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, this album is so fucking fire. Oh my god. I just I just listened that was my first KRS one album. I just listened to it this year. Because I never liked Harris one before. I used to thought he was corny when I was young. I was like, oh, it's corny as an old school rapper. But then when I got older, I was like, damn, this nigga nice. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. that was kind of new for me. Um, shit like that, man. I'm listening to a lot of old shit, man. Like yeah. a lot of old shit I be listening to, man. Yeah, nah, you <laughs> go front. You can't go wrong with what the you, old, say? you can't go wrong with the old shit. I mean, yeah, you got you got to go there, man. Hell yeah. I want people to listen to my music 10, 15 years from now. I will hope people listen to me, you know? Yeah. There's no shame in that. Like, there's no shame in listening to old older rap. You know what I mean? That word old, you got to kill a stigma of that. Classic. Let me say that. Yeah. I listen to a lot of old shit. I listen to a lot of classic shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But um, hell yeah. As far as new albums, I really ain't hear nothing that I thought was too mind-blowing. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, me, I'm not really, like, like I really don't like new gangster rap. I really don't listen to it like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know, I just don't fuck with it like that. Like I used to when I was younger. I think for me, growing up how I grew up and seeing a lot of situations that I saw, it's like a lot of that music don't really resonate with me the way it used to because it, it's like reminds me of things I don't like to think about. So I don't really listen to a lot of gangster rap. Like, I don't listen to a lot of shoot 'em up, bang, bang, I sell coke, all that. It's hard for me to listen to it because it's like, I just don't like it no more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I listen to a lot of old shit, like a lot of uh, conscious hip hop, shit like that I be trying to fuck with. Because I really just don't even like the energy of that shit anymore. It's just hard for me to listen to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I really ain't been listening to like like a lot of the underground rap to me now is a lot. It's a lot more street orientated. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot more gangster. Yeah. And I don't, I, you know, not like like old school gangster rap because like most of the old school gangster raps, like N.W.A. really was more political than gangster. You know what I'm saying? Like fuck the police, etc. With Scarface, the Ghetto Boys, they wasn't really a political group, but they had a gangster overtone. Yeah. Um, but like. A lot of the new shit is just like killing niggas for no real reason. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just hard for me to listen to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like, it makes me think about like my best friend doing life in jail for murder. Like, I just don't like to hear it. It just don't. Oh, not fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it just don't sit right with me. I don't find it entertaining. I don't really like it like that. I know some niggas that's their life, da 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 da, I get it, but like, just me. As a black man, it's just hard. It's just gotten harder in my older years. Now that I'm in my 30s, it's a little harder for me to really enjoy it and turn my mind off and enjoy it yeah. on a regular basis. As opposed to when I was, like, young, I didn't really think about stuff like that. But, like, as I got older, I really started, that shit started to resonate with me differently. So, like, I listen to a lot of, but I, I still fuck with shit. You know what I'm saying? But I just always wish that, like, the music has a purpose deeper than just talking shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like music with a purpose or music with a a, a, a a moral compass or like an emotional base. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can listen to DMX. Like, DMX always told me I kill him motherfuckers and he gonna fuck your daughter right in front of you, all this crazy shit. But, you know, he still got his songs about God and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't talk about that. We got songs he talking to Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus, but you know, shit like that. So I just I just always try to look for something that has a 360 view, not just something that's like one track minded. So a lot of rap, like a lot of underground rap, I don't really be fucking with that shit like that no more. Cause it's just like, this guy is so like, it just ain't fun to me no more. It ain't really fun. Yeah. So I, I, you know, that's how I ended up really like getting into a lot of old school hip hop. Cause it was just more fun to me. Like it was just more silly, like motherfucking, uh, uh, Niggas be having songs about dumb ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Just just yeah. rapping just to rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just I yeah. miss that. I miss that fun. You know what I mean? That's why I like even with the, like a lot of my records, a lot of my records, I don't be talking about shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, even on Confessions of a Sex Addict, I got that song Gonzo, right? Yeah. I'm just talking about porn. I'm just talking yeah. about like porn stars I like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I miss that type of shit. Like, you don't have no rappers doing that shit no more. Nobody's just making some silly shit, just just rapping just to have fun, just using the words for fun. Like, everything yeah. has become so yeah. dark to me. I, I just don't, I don't ring, I don't fuck with it like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yesterday when I was walking my dog, I listened to, um, to John Coltrane's My Favorite Things um, mm-hmm. album, you know, and it's like his, his, his take on that song. You know, yeah, it's just like mind blowing, and and like you said, like you said, um, more more often than not, I like to go back to the old school and just whether it be hip hop or or otherwise, and just listen to how they used to do it back then. It's just, yeah, it's really uncanny how different it is from then to now. Yeah, it's more fun, more creative. You know, yeah, yeah, it wasn't taken as serious. You know, that's why I like even like, I don't even like to get into who's a good lyricist debates and shit like that. Cause like, I don't, I don't even know what being a lyricist even means, you know. Like to me, a great a great lyricist is somebody who writes great songs, you yeah. know. Like nobody don't listen to fucking Curtis Mayfield or like Donny Hathaway and Marvin Gaye and be like, yo, he's a great lyricist. Like they just write great songs, but they was great lyricists too, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I don't get into that all like, oh, you spit good punchlines. Like that shit is whack. Like who gives a fuck? Like, <laughs> oh. like to me, it's always. I look at I look at hip hop as being like just how you express yourself. Like my, you know, one of my favorite rappers is Doom, like MF Doom, right? Yeah. What the fuck does Doom really even rap about, bro? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you don't yeah. even know what he rap like, bro. What the fuck does he even rap about? <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't even know. You can't say what he raps about. Like you can't say what MF Doom raps about. Made a whole album about food. You can't define it in one term. You can't be like, yo, Doom, that shit is about Bop. Like, mm. that song I'm, I, I just was talking about, um, Gonzo, I got that record from a Doom record, right? I was listening to this Doom record he did with Just Blaze yeah. called Cookies. Mm-hmm. You ever heard that song? Uh, I don't think so, no. He, just, he got a song called Cookies. We rap about when he's little, all his favorite cookies. Yeah. That's what the song's about. The song's just about, like, yo, I like the... I used to like the cinnamon cookies. I like the, the coconut cookies. Like, he just be rapping about all the different cookies he liked when he was a little kid. And they sampled the Cookie Monster for the record. <laughs> that shit was fly as hell to me. I'm like, damn, that's, that's fucking crazy. Like, yeah. you know, he, it's just fun. That's what rap's supposed to be. That shit is just fun. It's just like, whatever. Like, it's just some bullshit. Yeah, it's some bullshit. some stupid shit. Whatever, right? But it's just how you express yourself. It's just something you thought about. Remember when you was little, you used to eat cookies. And you write about cookies, man. It, yeah. it takes 20 minutes to do that shit, but it's just some fun shit. That's what poetry is about to me. That's what hip hop is about to me. For me, that's what it's about. So like, that's the shit I be fucking with more so. Like, that's the shit I always try to create is that, you know, just something that's a little bit different. You know, you can't really say that. Like somebody say, oh, and then if somebody says, um, what, what, what is MF Doom about? You know, you'd be like, oh, you play him a song about cookies. Would a motherfucker think his whole album is about cookies? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that still wouldn't tell you what his album is about. He got a song called One Beer. You know what I'm talking about? He told my beer and shit. Like, yeah. it's just some regular ass shit. But like, come on, son. That shit is fire, though. You know what I mean? So that's, that's the type of vibe I'll be on. That's just the type of vibe I'll be on musically. Yeah. No, it's fair. Have you, um, that's going to be thinking. Um, have, you, uh, have you ever heard of the artist um, Rap Ferreira? R.A.P. Um, R.A.P. Ferrero. Or Milo. Nah, not familiar. Like he's known as Milo um, because the guy has two aliases now. But um, yeah, he's an underground rapper. But 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 the thing is, he has like a weird lyrical content. You know, what, like you know, one moment he'll be talking about politics, the next moment on the, the next moment he'll be talking about you know laundry, and you know, like in his head, like on the song, it's like, oh, if I have six kids, how many like how many laundry baskets is that like? <laughs> he talks about laundry and like <laughs> yeah the concept of like having a family and how many laundry yeah baskets that is how much laundry detergent does he have to buy and just like that's it is all. That's all. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> stream of uh, consciousness like stream of thought yeah yeah it's fire yeah whenever I, whenever I listen whenever I listen to a song I'm like thinking about it I'm like oh when I have a family how much laundry do I have to do <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But nah, that's fire. I fuck with shit like that. I fuck with shit like that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the type of vibe I like, man. And it's actually interesting because just, on the same just, song, he um like on the same song, he says, Oh, like I wonder if Chance the rapper does his own laundry. 
<laughs> like, that's crazy, like, to think about. <laughs> I mean, nah, you know what's so funny? I never heard of him. You know what I'm saying? I, I might have heard of him and shit, but I, I, you know, like, the name sounds familiar, but I know, yeah, I really, I really don't know too much about him. Like, I got I to gotta dig into him. Well, as we speak, I'm going to send you the copy of the album. Okay, all right. I mean, yeah. I would just listen to YouTube anyway. Oh, yeah, well, that's where it's from anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> very, yeah. Very. All right, cool. So, anyway. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's like mainly jazz. It's like jazz kind of spoken word, like a, like a spoken word narrative. He's kind of like a, yeah, less rapping, more spoken type word. But it's okay. Good. It's, it's interesting. It's, um, like, it's actually my pick for the number one rap album of this year. <laughs> Not that it matters. All right, all right. <laughs> Still. Yeah, I fuck with, I fuck with, you fuck with Chris Crack? Um, wait, Chris who? Chris Crack, like ass crack with Chris Crack. I've never heard of him, I don't think. Let in me see. Chicago. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my homie right there. He nice. Um, right. Who else I fuck with? My rap friends. Wiki, of course. Wiki's my nigga. Yeah. But Wiki album ain't come out this year. Wiki album came out last year. Yeah. Oh, man. Which album should I start with for Chris Crack? Or just any? Any any one of them shits. I'm on. He, I'm on. I did two songs for that. Me put them shits out here. Um, <laughs> you you can you can you can start with any one. They all hard. Like he he's one of them artists that bring out a lot of shit. I don't even know what his last shit was. Yeah. Well, yeah. according to my thing, yeah. Haters forget they were fans first. Yeah. That listen to that one. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna yeah. So after this, I'm gonna listen to this album and um yeah, write a review about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris the man. That's my man too. But, See, that's um, what I mean. You know, when I was saying earlier about how there's kind of like a family vibe to underground rappers. I mean, like I don't see this kind of. I very rarely see this kind of. You know, this kind of. Oh, shout out to this guy. He's dope. Kind of. You know, shouting out on mainstream artists. And I, I mean, you know, I'm sure like, shit. yeah. Drake be shouting niggas out. He be getting, he be stealing their songs and shit. Do a remix, get them lit. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Drake is pretty. Yeah. He. Yeah. He does help. <laughs> yeah. Help. Yeah. <laughs> help. Who's use that word for now? Help. Yeah. Help. And and you know, like one one thing that just came to my head now, like, and this is for anyone. Like, I guess I can ask this about anyone, but. I'll, but I'll ask you, like, having such a long career, how did, like, I can't imagine trying to remember all the songs you wrote and and performed, you know, for, like, live concerts or something. How do you even remember all these songs? Like, I guess writing them changes it a bit, like, helps you remember. But to me, it sounds like so overwhelming of a task to remember all your songs. <laughs> What'd you say? Um, no, not really. No, it's not so really. Many um... songs and so many lyrics. Yeah, but I really don't. I never remember the um. I never remember the fucking. I never remember the words. I just remember the rhythm. So I don't have to remember the words. Yeah. Oh, true. Fair enough. Yeah. So like, I just remember how it, how it sounds, and the words just come to me. I don't think about like what I'm actually saying. I just think about the flow of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I never really forget it because it's all like saying one big word to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So where you are at the moment, like as in where you're living, like is um is live concert still a thing or is COVID kind of shut that down? Oh yeah, y'all don't have COVID over here no more, right? Oh true. Oh no, in Australia. No, no mask. I don't have COVID anymore, right? Oh no. Yeah, I heard I heard y'all beat it. Yeah, we're thirty four days in, no cases. Wow, the whole country? Mm. Well, um I mean like in our state, it's that, but it, but in, but in that, like in other states, it's only one case there, one case there. It's not really um, bad. It was over. Pretty much, yeah. But it came with strict, like st we're talking strict restrictions, lockdown, to get there. Like, yeah, yeah. It was horrible at the start of this year. We couldn't leave five kilometers from our house. Mm. So how did you eat? Oh, like you know. Um, we just had to go to supermarkets around the area. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, you have to get permits for, like, doctors. And work stuff. If you, like, okay. if you worked outside of the 5Ks, you needed a permit. 
so that the police can check it and confirm. Okay. It. Yeah. Mosques are still mandatory. And it's fire. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it was crazy for like a few months, but now because of it, yeah, we're now down to zero cases, so I can't blame it too much. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Mm. Oh, hello? Yeah, I'm here. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Shit. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good, 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 good. Cause my phone is... I keep forgetting it's a Zoom call. It's not a phone call. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, yeah, so, you know, like... Yeah. What's up? Oh, no. No, no go. No, no, I was, I was, it was inconsequential what oh. I was about to say. Yeah, I was, I was just going to ask, what's it like in your state? Like, how's the COVID? Like, do you guys have lockdown on, at all or is there any, anything? Um, no, not really. Not right now. Um, everything's closed, though. Yeah. But um, I think it's a loose, looser restrictions and shit, but it ain't as bad as it was when it first started, which it should be. But... I mean, I don't even know at this point. It's like, I live in the tri-state area. Yep. I live in Jersey, which is mm -hmm. like one state over from New York. Yep. Maybe like an hour. I probably live like maybe 30 minutes from the city. Yep. So, it's a little bit different, but typically as New York goes, New Jersey goes, because it's like their sister, their sister states. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, B. It's, it's been like weird. <laughs> yeah. Like on one side of the game, on one side of the game, like they like, yo, don't go nowhere. Then like they open a certain shit and they saying it's okay, but then it's not okay. It's like real confusing. So that's why everything is going back up now. Yeah. Because you're not really giving people clear restrictions. You're like playing favorites. Like, oh, they got money over here so they could go out. They don't got money. They can't go out. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just like. You know, we enforcing masks. Then he was beating up all the black people for not wearing masks. <laughs> but then he wasn't doing it to the white people. They was like handing out, handing out masks to the white people, and then whooping the black people ass for not wearing masks. That's fucked up. So everybody started making a big stink about this. If he was taking pictures of cops doing this shit, yeah. So it was they was someone like basically the difference in policing. So you you know you have. When they was in Manhattan, Upper West Side, they was being nice. They was giving people masks. Oh, come on, guys, wear your mask. Then they go to where I'm from, and they punch your motherfuckers in the face for not wearing a mask. They they slamming people's heads on the ground for not wearing a mask. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it became a big thing because, you know, now everybody has cameras. So you're going to see this shit. So now, you know, so then they kind of had to get lax. They were firing a lot of cops behind this shit. So it's just been like a big clusterfuck to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really ain't been, it's not really been a consistent enforcement of anything. And I think that's why America is just in such shambles. Because I think we got the most cases in the world or some shit, don't we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know. You know, people, because this, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how it is over there. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't really know a lot about Australia other than, the 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 animaniacs I think come from over there, right? <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Right, you don't know the animaniacs? Probably younger than me. But um, yeah, I know that. But um, but yeah, so it's like over here is very. I'm I'm sure every country is like this, but it's all financial based. Mm -hmm. So America is very big on like letting everybody die if rich people could still keep their way of life. Yeah. So this is the big battle of why COVID has ravaged this country that way, this way, because you have a whole government that's put in place, not really to govern more. So they're put in place to make sure that the rich people still make money, no matter what happens. Yeah. That's really their main objective. So that's what this whole year has been about. Like, um, even like they shut all everybody's independent business down. No venues. Uh, so many, so many venues I performed at on tour have closed. So like, even when things open back up, it's kind of like for us artists who are independent artists, I, I really think about that. Like, well, what, where are we even going to perform? Yeah. How are we going to perform? You know what I'm saying? But, um, but 
they, when it came to certain uh certain big businesses they just gave them a big uh like a big stimulus package to make sure that they was good these people didn't play the employees you got people out here uh there's so much things going on man. this is a fucking hellhole right now and everything is about politics nobody really cares about nobody really cares about what's going on with the common person it's all about the rich people and they all defend protecting themselves and like they pretty much left the average person just to die and that's really what's been happening out here in short you know people could blame donald trump but it's not really donald trump it's really just all of them <laughs> it's just easy to say him because everybody hates him but it's not just him it's it's all of them they all in it together because they don't they all rich they all got money whether they you know so that's the main problem. So out here is just, it's it's gonna be like fucked up for at least for another year, I believe. Yeah. Another year or two. Mm-hmm. Sounds intense. <laughs> What'd you say? Sounds intense. Sounds intense. Uh no, nah, not to me. No, <laughs> <But, laughs> uh, like I mean uh, like we see news reports about America on you know, on our news apps and T V and stuff and just sounds like a pretty in, yeah intense is, is the word i would use but if not for you then that's fine <laughs> you live there so yeah you, you know what because i'm just i'm just used to it so it's not intense you know it's just like i guess like going in a fire isn't fire isn't intense for a firefighter after a certain amount of years like yeah it's probably intense for you for him it's tuesday yeah True. True. <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying so you know that's what i meant when i said that but nah you know it's, it's, it's fucked up. That I, I always wonder, like, what is the perception of America in other countries? To y'all, like, how do y'all look at us, this country, with all the things that go on here? Like, what is, what is, the, common, what is the common Aussie perception of America? Well, the common thing, as far as I've heard, is pretty much how Donald Trump is the dumbest person on earth. Everyone, well, that's how he's portrayed over there? Well, that's how, yeah, over here, no one, I don't think I've met one Trump supporter. Here in Australia, wow. yeah, it's um pretty interesting. I mean, to be fair, no one really, no one here really likes Biden either. But they prefer him over. Oh Trump. yeah, we don't like. Yeah, we don't like him either. Yeah, so I can't imagine the the kind of situation you guys are in, <laughs> choosing between. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is, right? Yeah, you know, I don't think people even think about things that far, right? Because I mean. Four years is a funny number. Like, they're, they're president for four years. So, I think people don't even really... By the time that the, the fourth year comes, they start manufacturing this hysteria where it's like, oh, we can't fix nothing now because we got to do this. You know, it's like that every four years. And people yeah. fall for it every four years, you know. Never matters. They, they're going to fall for it. Like, in four years from now, there'll be a new Trump. There'll be some type of new person that everybody doesn't like. And then they're going to be like, well, you got to vote for me because you don't want to vote for him. And it's going to be the same type of bullshit again. I guarantee you. It's like that every fucking presidency. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, it's all, it's all a money game. To me, in my opinion, I think it's all a money game. Yeah. You know, it's all a money game. You got the rich people. They just want to keep everybody else manipulated and fighting amongst themselves so that they can maintain power. And they really never have to do anything real for you. Mm. You know, they're never really going to help you. They're never going to help you upgrade your life. You know, it's not like that. So you might have little, little smidgets of help from the government, but for the most part, they really, their main, America is corporate run. Their main concern is just making sure that their corporate donors and the people that donate to their campaigns get return on the investment. The lobbyists and certain people like that, that put money into these politicians' pockets, that's what they look out for, man. They, yeah. don't, really give, they don't really care about the average person. They come to you when it's time for you to vote, to put them in position, so that they can make money for the people that, you know, are backing them and spending money and, you know, all their little buddies and they do a little banquets and shit like that. But you're always going to be complaining about government, you know, it's just how it is. Yeah. So well, strap up. I'm sure it's like that too, right? Over there. Yeah. No, um, no one here likes our prime minister. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. You know, I feel like it's it's kind of gotten like, because even I think with Boris Johnson over in Europe, they don't fuck with Boris. Like, yeah. everywhere. I don't, I know in Venezuela, they don't really fuck with that dude, too. Then they, like, stage a coup to get him out. Like, the whole fucking country went out there and shit. Like, they're protesting in France right now. Yeah. The riot, they're, they're, 
Yeah, like, I mean, everywhere is like that. You know what I'm saying? Because this system is just, it's not really for, it's not really for the average person. Yeah. You know, and I think people are starting to come to realization, like, it's, well, it's more of us than it is of y'all, so yeah. fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I so, mean, um, you know, that kind of takes me back, like, a comment, um, like, I'm just, like, I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to go into women and say that, and just assume you've listened to, to Pimper Butterfly. Right? Of course. Yeah. The last, you know, the Tupac part, where Tupac says, mm-hmm. the next time there'll be riots, there'll be bloodshed. It won't be no more, um, what do you say? There won't be no more cr- clanning or something. There'll be murder. And, um, of course. It's, it's, it's coming to that, isn't it? It feels like it. Well, well, here in the West, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, on the other side of the country, I mean, on the other side of the globe, they do that shit for sport. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go to certain places, they don't get they don't they'll they'll just do it, they'll just stage a coup and out and oust whatever regime is in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at look at Gaddafi. They just went in there and stuck a knife in his ass and killed him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That happens all the time. But like in the West, we 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 kind of like train the people to get mad, but not so mad that they're willing to lose their way of life. And the police over here are so militarized and so high tech that it's almost impossible to even beat them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you stuck between a rock and a hard place when you when you're dealing with like America, you know? So this is this is what I'm thinking is very interesting about about uh about these next coming years. Because there's only so much lying they could do, right? Like Yeah. Eventually, people are going to have, it's going to, I think that's the whole thing with the Donald Trump dude. It was just like, it got to the point almost where he, you, 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 you almost have to, uh, you, you, you have to address this shit. Like you got dudes getting killed in the street. They suffocating black men for eight minutes on camera. And it was just getting to the point where it was like, yo, we just have no choice but to kill y'all. Like, yeah. so they was like, all right, we got to get them Biden. We got to try to get, get this dude out of here. Cause they're going to start waking up. It's getting too blatant. You know what I'm saying? It's getting too blatant. So we're going to see what Biden does. Because I, I feel like they, they almost have to play nice with the public right now. Because it's getting to the point where people are like, yo, y'all leaving us no choice. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Y'all leaving us no choice. We can't go back to sleep. Mm. So interesting times, man. Interesting times. It, what did you call it? You called it intense, right? Yeah, that's how it sounds to me. Yeah, yeah, intense. And um, what's, your, what's your stand on the gun laws in America? Yeah, you well, I'm from New York. I'm from New York. We're not late. We're not allowed to have a gun under any circumstance for any reason in New York. Oh, really? Like I really yeah. don't know anything. Oh, well, true. I thought. Well, oh. Yeah, New York is. Uh, well, America is like on a state level. Yeah. You know, guns, gun laws vary from state to state, and New York is so strict with guns. I mean, everybody has a fucking gun, but I mean, legally, you can't have one. But um. It's so strict that you can't even, you can't even, like, say I lived in in Maine and I was trying to drive through New York to get to the other side of New York and I had a gun on me. Yeah. I can't even drive with a registered gun through New York. Yeah. So if my gun is registered in my state, if I drive through New York with my gun, I still go to jail for years. Right. I have to drive around New York. I can't move with a gun. I can't have a gun in a moving truck or nothing. Like, it's... Is that fucking crazy? Is that strict out here? Like it's serious. Do you agree with the strict you know? laws, or are you more of a pro gun? Um. Yeah, I'm pro gun, man. I can't lie. I mean, I feel like everybody has the right to defend themselves. Yeah. Because if, if nobody had a gun, I would I wouldn't be pro gun. But the fact that somebody has one, then I think somebody else should have one. That's the fucked up part about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's just fucked up. It's just fucked up that you can't chill and not have a gun. You know, my father shot somebody in my house when I was little. Mm. You know what I mean? When I was little, this this you know when I was real little, somebody broke in our house. Yeah. And my father shot him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, the what if he didn't have that gun? I probably yeah. wouldn't be talking to you right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? So I can't say that like I can't. I can't really say what's right or what's wrong, but I do feel like if some, if one person can have one, then everybody can have one. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, it's super strict here. 
<laughs> yeah, I know that. I'm aware of that. I did know that. Yeah. So, but y'all don't have the same amount of gun crime over there, right? Uh, no, we don't have barely any. I mean, there is some, mm -hmm. but not yeah, not that much. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes like what three or four years of uh, three or four years to even be eligible to apply for a hunting gun license. And then you wow, that's crazy. Out here, you could just walk in. You could walk in a corner store and get a gun. In certain states, like you could walk in Walmart and yeah. just get, walk out with a gun the same day. A hunting, a hunting rifle. Yeah. But like, as far as a handgun, I think you gotta wait three days because they don't want you to go kill somebody if you're angry. Oh, true. Well, that makes sense. Does I, it really? <laughs> I mean, if, I mean, I'm gonna well, kill you Tuesday. I can kill you when Thursday. It's not <laughs> that you know. I can wait three days. I'm mad like that. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's, true. <laughs> You know, but I guess I guess you know it's supposed to quote unquote supposed to be a deterrent. You know yep. what I mean? But hey, man, this world, this whole fucking world is insane. Human sure. beings are pieces of shit. We crazy. None of you us. Know what I'm saying? We're just, all fucked up. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, I just I just think is the way I look at shit, man. Just you know, stay in your little bubble and try your best to um stay in your little bubble and try your best to just. Build with your family and your people and stay away from crazy motherfuckers, man. Yeah. You know, just stay away from people that don't give you the right energy. Get away from them. True. That's my mentality. That's how I live my life, you know? Yeah. And, so you know, the one thing I love about America is your food and your prices for stuff. It's so much cheaper than Australia. What? You got... I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, guess, how, um, guess how much it is for a packet of... 20s cigarettes here. How much? $27. What? For one What's pack the... 20s. How much? 20, yeah, 27.50 for one pack of 20s. God damn. So, it's kind of deep. Oh, uh, yeah, our tax, uh, uh, like the tax on cigarettes have imploded in the past few years. You smoke cigarettes? Uh, me and my girlfriend do. Like, like I'm more of a casual smoker, but she's a full time. Wow, wow, you gotta stop that shit, man. It's not good. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the advice. Sorry. But um, no, yeah, seriously, man. No, yeah, no, no. That's why I'm a casual smoker. <laughs> yeah, man, it's not good, man. But the food, I always see videos of food and like, you know, the food portions and the food and variety in America. And I'm always jealous watching YouTube videos. I'm like, fuck. You yeah, I heard we got nothing. big portions, but everybody fat over here though, bro. Oh, but the food must be delicious. <laughs> uh, Yeah, it is. I see videos like- You got a lot of different shit over there. Yeah, here we have nothing. We have one Carl's Jr. We don't have Wendy's. We don't have In and Out. We don't have any. <laughs> oh, damn. And Carl's Jr. is trash. Yeah, like I, like I always see videos: Red Lobster, Wendy's, fucking everything else. And I'm like, I, and I'm like, we don't have any of this shit. Y'all got McDonald's though, right? Yeah, but we, but unfortunately, we don't have Super Size. <laughs> Ours is just large. Oh, damn! They make sure that y'all okay. They make sure you're good. Our large is your medium. Oh shit, that's good though. So it's not a lot of obese yeah. people over here, like over here. There's a few. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm doing. They got to probably they probably get two mediums. No, nah, but it but but but, but that's the thing. I want to try your guys' versions. Like I want to pick up. Nah, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want this. It's like, oh come on, I love food. I'm obsessed with food. I... <laughs> and that's all I think about trying <laughs> foods, different foods and shit. Do you cook? Uh, not really. My missus <laughs> cooks for us. Uh, see, that's that's what you got to do. Yeah, everybody. You got to cook. Like, fuck with some um some recipes on YouTube. That's how I learned to cook. I learned to cook off YouTube. Oh, true. Now I can cook really well. Yeah, it's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's cook? why I would... What did you say? What kind of stuff do you cook? I Man, I can cook Chinese food. I can cook Mexican food. I can cook everything, bro. Jamaican food. Everything, man. I, 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 I do it. American food, I could make burgers. and I don't know what American food is because it should be just <laughs> amalgamation of a lot of different uh, cultures. But, um, but yeah, man, fuck with, fuck with YouTube, man. You'll learn to make some dope shit. You'll, uh -huh. you'll cook better than Red Lobster. You won't even need Red Lobster. 
Well, I'm already a sushi chef. <laughs> oh, word. Yeah, yeah. It's a fact. You just tell me that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I thought sushi was just raw fish. So what are you really doing? Nah, we have cooked tuna. We have chicken. We have prawns. Everything. Nah, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> nah, I know. Because I know you got to roll it in the rice and shit. Yeah, see? It's a complicated process. <laughs> yeah. You got to mix it. sushi blue. is not really... um. Sushi is not really raw, right? It depends on what you get. We have raw salmon. Oh, really? Raw salmon is ah. popular. But everything else is cooked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know, like, spicy tuna is, like, cooked and shit. Yeah, that shit's delicious. Favorite. Yeah, I love spicy tuna. Yeah, like a dragon roll and shit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, well, I, well, well, I actually work for a grocery store, but I work for the sushi department. So... Oh, shit, yeah, the sushi department and grocery store. Yeah, it's new. So, four years old, and I've been there since its opening. Fire. Oh, your daughter's up on... Your daughter's up again? Yeah, she up, man. She's a warrior, man. She she, she ain't sleep today. I don't know. What's, she gonna sleep all night, though. I know that. Uh, lucky you, then, huh? Yeah, I mean, she, she usually sleeps through the night. She's a good baby, man. She doesn't really cry. Yeah. She doesn't really cry. She's really... She's, uh... I took her to the... We took her to the doctor... Yep. She's operating at a ninth, a ninth, a nine month level. Oh wow! At six months, yeah. You know what I mean, she's fine. already standing up. She's not supposed to stand up yet. She's wow. already standing up. You know what I mean? She's very alert. She's cool. She's trying to talk already. Like, so she might be a little genius. So I'm just trying to keep it right. You gonna have a make some money so Daddy can retire. Yeah. What happened? You gonna have a Sherlock Holmes in your hands? Yo, mm. right? She too. She too knows you already. That's how they know that. That's how they test them to see if they're smart, right? What they do is they they take shit and then they hide it. Yeah. Like, so they show them something and they hide it. And they can test the baby's intelligence if a baby's aware enough to understand that something's been hidden from them and look for it. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're little, you don't think about it. It's just like, if you don't see it, it's not there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they, they was hiding shit and she could go and find it at six months. So she's a fucking genius. <laughs> how lucky you are, huh? You got a prodigy on your huh? head. Like how lucky you are. You yeah, have yeah. a prodigy. Yeah, yeah. I used to read to her when she was on her mother's stomach, so maybe it, it heard that I heard that helps. Oh nice. Well yeah, it definitely paid off. <laughs> yeah, what? hopefully. We'll see. Give me I ask me in eighteen years. Yeah, yeah. Now just need contacts. <laughs> eighteen years, I'll be I'll be forty six, forty eight. Hmm. Forty six? Oh, Not so bad. So what do you uh 26 now. 26 now. Yeah, yeah. So you'd be 42. Huh, I mean, nice. 44. Well, we got we to gotta make sure we stay in contact for 20, for 18 years. <laughs> yeah, 18 years. Just just for this. Just call me 18 years. Let me keep the same number. Just call me and be like, yo. Don't worry. I'm going to tell you the date on my, on my skin so I don't forget. <laughs> yeah, do it. You know what I'm saying? A reminder. So just set a reminder on your phone. You'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, keep the same phone for 18 years. Oh, what's wrong, baby? Come here. You want to come, Daddy? Yeah, man. So, you know, keeping nice. it rocking, man. Just hope I'm going to have one more. This is my first. Have me another one of shit. Yeah, nice. Right? Hey, your little brother, little sister. <laughs> right? Cause, you know, because I'm getting older. I want to have, try to knock this shit out before I get too old. Yeah. No, nah, exactly. That's how I feel sometimes as well. <laughs> nah, you got time. I wouldn't do it. If you're 26, I wouldn't do it for another... Um, I'd give it about another eight years, eight or nine years. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, well, you got time, man. I've been with my girlfriend for eight years. So, I mean... Yeah, I was with my girl for 10 before we had... I met my girl when I was 25. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what time is it there, anyway? Right now, it's like 6.30 or something like that. So oh, true. not as late as I thought. It's only eleven thirty in the morning, yeah. Oh shit. It's the morning time over there? Eleven thirty, yeah. Yeah, it's seven thirty. It's seven thirty at night right now. So okay, so so tell me, what's your what um what are you planning on making for dinner tonight for your for your daughter and you? Oh, I'm not cooking tonight. Um you gave me all she can't eat solid food. Food. She, um, she can't, she, nah, I'm not cooking tonight. I cooked last night, but, um, did I cook last night? I think I did. No, my girl cooked last night. No, my girl's bringing Jamaican food home, so we're going to eat Jamaican food. Oh, but she nah. can't eat solid food yet. Yeah, she can't yeah. eat solid food yet. She, she only got two teeth. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. 
I've always wanted to try Jamaican food. Yeah, I got you. I'm half Jamaican, so, you know what I mean? You come out here, I chef it up, or I take you to Brooklyn. That's where you get the best Jamaican food, Brooklyn or the Bronx. Sweet. Well, once, once, it, once the international um, flights lift from Australia, definitely, then I'll come over and um, get Jamaican food. Dad, dad, yeah. She really is smart. <laughs> So, uh, you, you yeah, man. So, yo, uh, yeah, I am, bro. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It definitely is. A, this was a lifesaver having a baby. I was going to say, yeah, it sounds like a real blessing. She sounds like a real blessing. Yeah. Yo, man, I did not expect that. I was always, you know, I was like a wild dude, man. So, I never really expected to, like, slow down and have a baby and shit. Like, shit is weird to me. Yeah. And you know, I home. always was so reckless and... Yeah. I never really cared. I never really thought I would even live to be this old. So, it yeah. was like, you know what I'm saying? Not even like, I, just, I don't know. I just felt like, I don't know. I felt like something would happen. You know what I'm saying? But I just got lucky and then I had a baby and I had a good woman who loved me and supported me. So, yeah. I was just, you know, I got, I got lucky, baby. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, just, you know, just probably, you know, one more, like, one more proper music question for the interview. What's up? It, it, mm -hmm. it's, something, it's something that I've thought about pretty much a whole life since listening to music, um, like hip hop specifically. You know, you you listen to artists like Jay Z, um, formerly I guess Dr. Dre, and, and all these people who are married and have kids or whatever. But yet in their music, they still yeah. talk about you know quote unquote bitches and you know sleeping around and stuff. But they're married. I want like, do you think? Do you think? Do you think or Snoop Dogg? Do you think that's like something that the wives are like in like an agreement they have to make with the wives saying, Oh, this is just for my image. Don't worry, I'm still loyal. Yeah, I mean, do you think you think their wives like being rich? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always thought that part too. Like they don't care because the money yeah, but... Of course, man. It's just an act, you know what I'm saying? Like I said earlier, I was talking about like how I don't listen to street rap as much anymore. Yeah. Like I like I could never knock street rap because a lot of times, this shit is just an image and shit. You know what I mean? It's just like Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, he's not really, like, killing nobody. Like, it's just a movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like nobody listens to R&B and listens to Mariah Carey. And, like, she might have, like, six songs about getting her heart broke. Nobody's like, yo, she didn't fucking get her heart broke this many times. Why she lying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just songs. Yeah. It's just music. You know what I mean? Sounds nice. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um... I think that's that's how I think they women look at it. It's just it's just an act. It's just like if your your husband was a um, if your husband was a, a Brad Pitt or some shit like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, would you get mad if he was doing a fucking love scene in a movie? Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's part of his gig. You know what I'm saying? So, rapping about bitches and shit, it's just, it's just part of the gig, man. Sometimes it's hard. Like I was in the studio with Danny recently, and um. He was talking and he was saying like how he didn't want to talk about certain shit anymore because, mm. you know, his daughter's 18 now, blah, 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 blah. And I really understood where he was coming from, but I, I told him the same shit. I'm like, yo, bro, like, bro, we have the license to be kids forever. We're artists. That's the whole point of doing art. <laughs> say what yeah. the fuck we want to say. You know what I'm saying? We can say what the fuck we want to say. Yeah, true. It is true, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I was going to say, is the, song you, is the song you made with Danny already out? Have I missed it? Is it? Oh, oh man, here you go. Nah, it's not out yet, man. <laughs> and top secret, V. I need to hear it. Let me in on the loop. I don't even know if I'm gonna use it. I don't even know if I'm gonna use it. So. Well, if it, well, if you don't end up using it, send it to me. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I'm not gonna share it. <laughs> I don't know about that one. But nah, um, nah, 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 nah. It's not out yet. It's not out yet. Damn. Well. Let me just say, I can't wait for your new album. I can't wait to see the Danny Brown tracks on there. And it's not, it's not on this one, so don't worry about it. Ah, oh, well, still, <laughs> can't wait for your new album. Do you have any other yeah. features lined up that you can actually talk about, or people in mind? Um, for this record, I don't even think anybody's on this album. Not yet. Nobody's on it yet. But I'm like, I'm doing a whole, I'm doing like a whole another album called Esquire and Friends. So that's going to be like just feature heavy. Like every song's going to be me and somebody else. Yeah. Um, I just came up with the concept like two days ago. 
And then um, then I have another album I'm doing called Blood on the Moon, which is like a concept album. I did this song on Live Forever called Blood on the Moon, where it's like, it's like a sci-fi story, it's like a storyteller song, but it's like sci-fi rap. Like I'll try to do like a sci-fi rap where I was like in space and then I was wanted and all this crazy shit. So like I'm doing a whole album with that concept. So it'll be like, it's gonna be like six songs, basically like a movie in like yeah. audio form. Mm -hmm. And um, then I got my other album, the, the album I'm working on right now is called Pieces of a Black Man. I'm yeah. working on all three of these albums simultaneously, so. And then I got, you know, I got another album that everybody wants to hear, but I don't know when I'm gonna put that one out. Well, you're a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a busy guy, bro. Uh, Ava. Yeah, cool. all right. Um... Well, it looks like your daughter's um, you know, wanting your attention, so I, think, so I think I might just let you go here. <laughs> yeah, let me do this, man. This yeah. girl is crazy, man. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, bro. <laughs> all right, later, bro. I'll talk to you soon, man. Yeah, and just, uh, just uh, one more thing. It's all good if I post this on my music group. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with it, man. It's just yours, right? Just making sure. And and make sure you join. Come on, support. Uh, send, yeah, send it to me. Um, I don't know how to... It's a Facebook group or something? Yeah, yeah. You just push invite <laughs> or like. Ah, uh, yeah. Just send it to me and I'll join. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. All right, sweet. All right, thank you for your time. And um, yeah, enjoy your time with your daughter. All right, for sure, kid. All right, have a good one. All right, take care, brother, man.